Now today I'm going to show you how to create two different types of patterns in Photoshop. The first one's going to be using graphics and the second one will be using an image. Now before we start, the easiest way to create a graphic pattern is to create a 500 by 500 pixel canvas with a 300 pixels per inch resolution. So while you create a new document with those settings, that will leave you with exactly what I have set up right now. So for our first example, I've already gone ahead and created a little graphic pattern of my own. I'm not going to really explain how I made this one because I assume you have a pattern that you want to create create yourself. Now, just to give you a bit of context, I created just three different triangle layers using my triangle tool found within the shape tools here. And then as for the background, I just used a custom shape and the arrows here, I selected this arrow, made a black stroke, and then just duplicated the arrow a bunch of times to get the result you see here. Now, what's important to note is that none of my graphics are extending past the edges of my canvas. By not having anything touching the edges, it's going to make Make life a lot easier to create your repeating pattern. Now, once you have your pattern created like this, without anything crossing over the edge of your canvas, we will first duplicate and merge all of our layers. So clicking on the bottom most layer and then holding shift and clicking on the top most layer, we'll press command or control J and then command or control E. So that will create a copy of everything and then merge everything onto one layer as you see here with my triangle three copy. Now with that layer selected, we're going to go up to filter down here to other and then off Set. Now this is where the square canvas comes into play because by using equal dimensions it makes it a lot easier to find the offset values that you should use for your repeating pattern. Now since my canvas is 500 by 500 pixels, I'm going to set half of that value for the horizontal and vertical offset. So since I did 500, half of that is 250. So I'm going to put 250 in the horizontal value and 250 in the vertical value. And that will automatically realign everything for me to create a repeating pattern. Now I'll click OK. Now at this point, if you'd like, you can also add other shapes within this repeating pattern because right now your pattern is ready to go except this is just like a large blank area in my specific pattern. So maybe you'd want to add another shape or something like that. I'm not going to make any other changes to my pattern just for the sake of simplicity. So let's go and create a pattern preset. So with your layer selected, we'll go up to edit and then down here to define pattern. In this option, I'll just call this to triangle pattern. And then when you're done, click OK. Now you have saved a pattern preset, which can be accessed when you go and create a shape, you use a layer style, or you use a pattern fill, for example. Let me show you our new pattern in action using a pattern fill. Creating a circle on top of my image like so, I'm gonna go to the fill option and then click on the pattern here. And now you'll see I have my pattern preset saved and I can just adjust the scale like so to bring that pattern outwards. And as you can see, it's endlessly repeating no matter what scale I have it set to. So that's just the beauty of the offset. It does all the work for you. You don't have to worry about it aligning and everything like that. If there's no weird lines after your pattern offset, then you're gonna have a great pattern result like this. Now creating a pattern with graphics is one thing, but let's go and create patterns using an image, which is kind of a different beast. Now in the second example, I have a metal shop floor texture, which I think could be cool if you make composites or something like that. It'd be nice to have this type of texture. So what we need to do is similar to before, offset this image and then create a duplicate pattern. So to start, we'll press Command or Control J to duplicate our layer, and then we'll go up to Filter, Other, and then Offset. Now since this image is not perfectly proportionate, what we have to do now is move our horizontal value until you start to see this line. As you can see here, you see the, this horizontal line. Now for the vertical, we're gonna try to bring that down a bit and you can see the cross section. So you can see the vertical line and the horizontal line. So we wanna try to get that as close to the center of our image as possible using the offset values here. So that looks good enough to me there. Click OK. Now what Photoshop has done is basically taken all the corners of our texture and wrapped them around. So this is basically like every corner touching and obviously they don't align. So we need to make them align in order to have a repeating pattern. Now I'm gonna use something called Content Aware to try to streamline this process, but I'm gonna show you a way to touch it up if it doesn't work. So the first thing to try will be the Content Aware Fill. So grabbing the Marquee tool by pressing M, we will just click and drag over to select that line on our image. And then we're gonna hold the shift key, notice a little plus icon beside my cursor there, and we're gonna click and drag over on the horizontal line as well. So that's gonna to add to our pre-existing selection, and now you can see we have a little plus 
for our selection that's covering those lines. Now I'm gonna right click inside of that selection and go to Content Aware Fill. Now here in Content Aware, anything that is green will be used as a sample to replace your selected area. And then the preview is right here. The problem with this pattern is that there's a lot of textures that need to be aligned. So it does an okay job, but there's like some repeating things that we need to get rid of. So I'm just gonna call that good enough for now. It did the bulk of the work for us, and then I'll click OK. That's gonna apply those adjustments into that selected area, as you can see here. So then I'll press Command or Control D to deselect that. Now what I need to do is because you can see along the horizontal edge, there's all these duplicate pieces, and then same thing with the vertical edge. What I'm gonna do is use the clone stamp tool to quickly touch all of this up. So creating a new layer, I'm gonna grab my clone stamp tool by pressing S, and then I'll set my opacity to 100%, flow to 100%, sample all layers selected, and I'm just gonna be using a soft round brush for now. Now I'm gonna just quickly go over the clone stamp tool, but if you want a more in-depth look of what this tool does, I'll leave a video up in the corner right now, which will show you everything you need to know about removing objects with this tool. But in a nutshell, all you have to do is hold Alt or Option and click in an area you'd like to sample, and then when you paint, you will just paint the area that you just sampled. So you're frequently holding Alt or Option to reset your sample and then painting over the area you want to remove. So I'm gonna quickly go around the vertical and horizontal axis of my photo here to remove any of those duplicate pieces that were created from the content aware fill. Since this will take me a second, I'll just skip ahead to when it's all ready to go. Okay, so now I've touched up everything. I'll just give you a quick before and after. We've just got rid of some of those extra lines and now we don't have any harsh edges left over from our repeated pattern. So now this image is ready to be saved as a pattern. So I'm gonna just shift click both of my layers here since my clone stamp layer was on a new layer. And then I'll press Command or Control E to merge it onto one. Now with that new layer, select We'll once again go up to edit and down here to define pattern and I'll call this to metal texture click OK And now let me show you an example of it in action once again Just creating a quick circle on my canvas I'm going to click on the fill value go to my pattern and then down here as my newest pattern preset I can click on that that's my metal texture and then I can go ahead and change the scale to just zoom that out like so and now we got this super awesome metal texture that I can apply to any of my shapes or images or text or whatever type of thing you wanna use the texture for. So although creating a pattern slash texture from an image is a little bit more work than using a graphic, it gives you a totally different result. And you can take photos of things that you already know you want the pattern of and then turn it into a pattern in Photoshop using these techniques. Now, if you enjoyed today's tutorial and it helped you learn something, of course, hit that like button down below and consider subscribing to stay up to date with more Photoshop tutorials just like today. Anyways, my name is Brennan from bewillcreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.